सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली वी आर टेकिंग ए ब्रेक फ्रॉम इसराइल इन द मिडल ईस्ट नाउ बिकॉज दैट्स एन ऑन गोइंग स्टोरी at the same time there are lots of interesting stories playing out in our country as well we can't be ignoring those because those are also very important for us the most important of these is the oncoming elections in five states that is once again to repeat madhya pradesh rajasthan chatisgarh telangana and mizoram all five important states even mizoram it may be a small state but also but at the same time it's part of the nda bouquet in the northeast and bjp likes to boast that either bjp itself the party or its allies are in power everywhere in the northeast so even that is an important state now we are to, today looking particularly particularly at the at the four bigger states and we are not looking at the internal politics of any of these states the four bigger states are madhya pradesh rajasthan chatisgarh and telangana but we are looking at some broad trends and we picked out with the help of dk singh our political editor who is watching as i record this so if i do something wrong if i say something wrong he will catch me immediately or maybe throw a dart at me so so here are the five trends in these four states i will first list the trends for you and then go into some detail number 1 this shows the survival of the old generation or maybe the last hora of the old generation or, or the last war cry of the old generation second these these elections show you how contrasting now the strategies are between the congress and the bjp one has become very high com- commandist and one has become very devolved to the states and to that extent the equation has changed in the past traditionally congress used to be a high commandist party with no power with the states and bjp used to be a party where states had a lot of power now that role has reversed and these state elections are telling us that the next important point is that these elections will determine the future both of india the alliance india india and nda indian politics has two alliances one is the bjp led alliance nda i'm listing that first because that's the alliance in power in delhi so nda as well as india the new alliance their future will be determined by these elections in these four states and i shall explain to you in a few minutes as to why i think so number 4 this will be an electoral test of the politics of giveaways i don't i prefer not to use the word freebies because freebies becomes too judgmental but you can call it giveaways you want to make it even more politically correct you can call it welfareism or welfare measures these elections will be a test of welfare measures giveaways whatever you call them as an electoral strategy and number 5 in these elections women voter has become a lot more prominent than in elections in the past and that's not only because the bjp has made women's reservation bill a big plank in these elections there are other factors there so these are the five factors we are listing today today i am not talking about each one of these in some detail with a little bit of opinion thrown in here and there it's more less opinion and more analysis in fact i draw inferences from facts available to me so first of all i said survival of the old generation or maybe the last hurrah of the old generation so see the leadership in all four states ksr in telangana i am deliberately picking up a non bjp non bjp versus congress state first because telangana among this lot is one of a kind so telangana ksr 69 now he is now the chief ministerial candidate of his party and there is no challenge after him are the children but you can see that this is most likely his last election so if he does get elected it's most unlikely that he will stand for elections again at the age of 74 because in 5 years his children will also would have also waited long enough and time would have come for him to make a call on succession because 74 is 74 so unlikely that he'll be a candidate and if 
he does not win this time. If he loses this time, then it's even less likely that he'll be the candidate the next time. That is the first case, which you can say pretty much is his last hurrah. Raman Singh in Chhattisgarh. BJP waited for the longest time before before they haven't quite said he's the chief ministerial candidate, but at least putting him in front and right now in the in, in Chhattisgarh. We'll come to that point, however, in our next section. But in Chhattisgarh, he's the senior most leader, the most powerful leader, and the most preeminent leader from the BJP now. And he's 71. So once again, you can say unlikely, because in any case, by the next election, he would have also passed the BJP's own 75-year limit. Vasundra Raje in Rajasthan. 70 again last election because by next election this will be 75 unlikely that she'll be ahead but at the same time in Chhattisgarh as well as Rajasthan the BJP has not put up a younger candidate to rival its older leader so once again this affirms the idea that this election also shows the survival or in fact maybe the more politically correct Expression is resilience of the older generation. KCR, Raman Singh, Vasundra Rajay. Then come to Rajasthan, Gehloth, 72. Unlikely, he'll have another election. He's had a challenge from pilot under him. So Congress party had a younger leader in the state, but Congress party has preferred to go with an older leader instead. So Gehloth at 72. BJP again in Madhya Pradesh, the leader is not that old, Shivra Singh Chauhan, 64. It just looks like he's been there for a very long time. So a four-term chief minister, again, four-term incumbent. The likelihood of the leader coming up for a fifth term and not, in fact, the leader himself not seeking any growth from there is not, is not very high. I would say it looks unlikely. So this looks like also his last innings, his last shot at power in the state. And BJP in Madhya Pradesh had younger leaders. It had Jyotra Dete Sindhya, for example, the, but the BJP has not fielded him in the state elections. Again, the BJP can't say, oh, he's, he's a central leader. No, BJP has fielded seven sitting MPs in including three serving central ministers in this election campaign. But they haven't fielded Sindhya because Sindhya would have been seen immediately as a challenger or rival to Shivra Singh Chauhan. That is no guarantee tomorrow that if an opportunity arises, BJP may not offer the job to Jyotra Ditya Sindhya. But those are all in the realm of speculation. Right now, BJP has had its senior most leader lead the party without saying that the leader is the chief ministerial candidate. Again, if you look at the Congress party, a key leader in Madhya Pradesh is Digvijay Singh, 76, who's campaigning, who has a key role in tickets, but more important than that, much more important than that, and that's why I'm, I'm holding it till the end, is Kamal Nath. Kamal Nath, among all the leaders in this election campaign, if I take out maybe Mizoram, or Mizoram is thereabouts, Kamal Nath is the oldest of the senior candidates in this contention. So Kamal Nath today is going to be 77, in a few weeks as we speak in the month of November. Congress party has preferred him to any younger leaders in Madhya Pradesh. In fact, we don't even see many younger leaders in Madhya Pradesh. And Congress party has let Kamal Nath build the party. Kamal Nath has had the biggest say in the distribution of tickets. So there is no doubt that he is the one in the lead at 877. And also you can say that if he wins power, then most likely there will be a successor groomed for him going ahead by the Congress party. Now, both Kamal Nath and Digvijay, one important thing is that both Kamal Nath and, and Digvijay already have their next generation, their respective sons in politics. Kamal Nath's son is an MP. That is the only Lok Sabha seat Congress party won in 2019 elections in Madhya Pradesh. The traditional family seat of Chindwada, which Kamal Nath used to win, and also Digvijay Singh's son is an MLA. So both have their next generation ready, but not, not quite succession ready as yet in state politics. Now, Chhattisgarh is a slightly mixed picture because the incumbent, Bhupesh Baghel, who's now been put up for re-election by the Congress party, he's quite young by the standards of Indian politics. He's 62. And the older leader, T.S. Singh Deo, who's been his challenger, he actually he actually has his last opportunity or probably his last opportunity to contest and doesn't look like he's in the leadership race. So once again, 
it's an older leader not in years but older leaders as in seniority that is bhupesh baghel go to mizoram i told you when i mentioned kamal nath and i, I said he's probably the oldest in the race with one exception of mizoram so that exception in, in mizoram is the is the incumbent chief minister of mnf mizoram national front 79 year old zoram thanga he used to be a fighter in the underground mizoram underground for a long time so zoram thanga is 79 and even his challenger from the congress party lal sota pool lal sota or pool zoram thanga and as we would say out of respect in 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 mizoram he is also 77 years old so once again once again we draw a line underneath all this and our conclusion is that this election sees in fact the resilience of the older generation in many ways this is this is the election of leaders above 70 years of age next contrasting strategies so in the past congress party was a high command run party everything was done by the high command states had no power bjp was a party which had a high command but the high command did not determine everything for the states bjp had strong state leaders who determined many things for themselves and that's why even in this states vasundhra raje shivraj singh chauhan they had emerged raman singh had emerged in chatisgarh in uttar pradesh se rajnath singh had emerged in maharashtra devendra fadnavis before that nitin gadkari so local state leaders had emerged in these states for the bjp that is not the situation now now bjp has doubled up on becoming a high command run party congress on the other hand these elections tell us because we've seen this trend growing but these elections sort of confirm the trend congress on the other hand is becoming a less high command run party so it's a bit like as the bjp has tried to mold itself in the image and style of the old congress old high command style of the congress congress is trying to evolve in the style of the loose high command strong state units style of the old bjp one things it was successful for the bjp in the past we should do it the other things that congress became successful and did this so why we shouldn't do it where is the evidence in these four elections i will tell you i will give you some examples so if you look at if you look at madhya pradesh in madhya pradesh congress party from the very beginning left no doubt that kamal nath was their chief ministerial candidate in fact they did not even have to announce it the state unit itself the state unit leaders themselves started saying local leaders started saying that wo hamare bhavi mukhyamantri hai he is our future chief minister the central high command never contested this or never denied this the bjp on the other other hand shivraj singh chauhan is in the election he has been given a ticket to contest but even now bjp is not willing to say that he will be the chief ministerial candidate in fact he himself can't say it any of his supporters can't say it the bjp even if its campaign has said that the prime minister and the high command will decide and the letter that the prime minister has written to the electorate in madhya pradesh that letter says bjp has said the pm modi will be the face of the party and that letter written by the prime minister says give me direct support as you did in 2014 and 19 what happened in 2014 and 19 it was the lok sabha election so he is seeking the vote for himself all ticket distribution etc has been done by the high command high command is has based its judgment on the inputs they get maybe from some local leaders or pe people in each constituency maybe the agencies as these are called or maybe surveys that the party conducts but these are not decisions of the state unit congress on the other hand for this for these years while they lost power under the charge of kamal nath so i'm sure there were knives out for kamal nath that is listen uh, he was the chief minister he should not have lost power he is guilty he is ineffective so get rid of him but, but the congress has and done it in fact in fact congress never changed him as the head of the party in the state as the chief of the party in the state in madhya pradesh while kamal nath has been left by the congress party unchallenged in madhya pradesh it looks as if a whole bunch of rivals of shivraj singh chauhan have been fielded these include kailash vijay vargya who is a powerful national general secretary he has been fielded and three central ministers narendra singh tomar who is a senior minister agriculture minister at the union level central level prahlad patel and faggan singh kolaste who is a scheduled tribe leader 
These three are included in the seven sitting MPs who have been fielded in Madhya Pradesh, while at the same time, nobody has said that Shivraj Singh Chauhan is our chief ministerial candidate. Let's come to Rajasthan now and see if Rajasthan passes this test. So once again, Congress has let Gehloth be. In fact, Congress has controlled Sachin Pilot. Again, if anything, Sachin Pilot has spoken less and less lately. Gehloth has had a key role in deciding who gets the tickets because ultimately, one who determines who gets the tickets in, a, in an election is the leader of the party in that state. In the BJP's case, on the other hand, a lot of it again has happened from the center, from the high command. Sundara Rajay was put on a long wait and was only accommodated in the second list when a lot of speculation had already started. Initially, while a lot of our loyalists had been left out, a few had been accommodated in the final list, but several of them are still left out. In fact, in fact, at one point in the early rounds, the BJP even left out late Bhano Singh Shekhawat, son-in-law, Narpat Singh Rajvi, now late Bhano Singh Shekhawat, who rose to be the Vice President of India, he was among the strongest and the most respected leader, leaders of the BJP in the era of Vajpayee and Advani. In fact, I would say Vajpayee, Advani, Shekhawat, then Murli Manohar Joshi and others. So he was like the number three at that point, former Chief Minister of Rajasthan as well. So his son-in-law was left out in the first lists. His constituency of Vidyadhar Nagar was given to Diya Kumari, the princess of the royal family of Jaipur, she was a sitting MP. She is a sitting MP from Raj Saman. So she was fielded. When she was fielded in this assembly election, it looked like the BJP had now chosen its preferred royalty in Rajasthan, that they were sidelining the Vasundra Raja stream of ro royalty, that is the Dholpur family, and bringing in the Jaipur family. That led to a sizable revolt. That led to a sizable revolt in the BJP. And Rajvi himself made a very strong statement without naming Diya Kumari. He said, he said, Mughlon ke aage ghutne tekne walon par party meherban. The party is very count to those who has gone down on their knees before the Mughals. That's obviously a reference to the Jaipur family. Maharana Pratap ke khilaf ladne wale parivar par bhi party meherban. The party is also very kind and generous to those who fought against Maharana Pratap. Bhairo Singh Shekhawat ji ki, Jeevan Bhar Seva ka tiraskar kiya ja raha hai. That means lifelong service rendered by Bhairav Singh Shekhawat, late Bhairav Singh Shekhawat is now being rejected or now being dumped. Now he, he was finally accommodated. He was accommodated but he was given yet another seat, right? So once again, all this decision making was done from the center. Telangana, Telangana BJP's head, the party chief who was quite popular, controversial, abrasive but popular, Bandi Sanjay Kumar. So it was under pressure from Itala Rajender who had just come from BRS, but not just under his pressure. There were also lots of people in the BJP who found him too abrasive for their comfort. To assuage Itala Rajender who had defected from BRS, from KCR's party, Bandi Sanjay was dropped as party chief and G. Kishan Reddy was sent from the center. He's a central minister to be the party chief. BJP then violated or made an exception to its own rule of one man, one post of one person per post. So G, so G. Kishan Reddy keeps, keeps holding his ministry in Delhi and is the party chief in the state. Congress on the other hand, Revan Reddy is no less controversial. He's no less abrasive. He's a, he's a headline hunter as well. But a lot of people complained against him. A delegation of dissidents came to meet Malik Arjun Kharge, the Congress president, who spoke with Revan Reddy, I believe, uh, he counseled him, at least I believe, on the evidence of DK Singh and told him to calm down and told his party dissidents to calm down and they did not change any lead and any leadership in the state. So, Revan Reddy continues to be the leader and also command a fair bit of authority. Then Chhattisgarh, until the last moment, until the last moment, it looked like the BJP will follow exactly the policy that they are following in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. And in fact, it looked like in Chhattisgarh, they will take it to the other extreme. So not field any prominent leader. At the very last moment, they fielded Raman Singh, the former chief minister. These five years, they never said Raman Singh is their leader. 
I mean, anybody can be vice president of the BJP at the national level. So many of these leaders who had been cast away were made vice president at the national level with no real role. These were just sinecures. But finally, when he filed his nomination, Home Minister Amit Shah did land up in Chhattisgarh. So it looked like that there was support for Raman Singh. But, but that happened very late. Once again, if you read all this, along with what happened in Karnataka. Once again, the local party unit, the state party unit was ignored by the BJP and all decisions, particularly on ticket distribution, were made from Delhi. Next point, the third important point, these elections will determine the future of both India and NDA. The answer is very simple. If the opposition, that is the Congress in this case, in all these states, Congress matters. If the Congress does very well in these states, then that will give strength to the India alliance because then it will be seen as, look, Congress party is a strong core, their stature has gone up and so it is attractive and it may be prudent to go and join an alliance led by the Congress. It will burnish the Congress's credentials for leadership of the alliance and that way India will be strengthened. On the other hand, if the BJP does brilliantly in these and BJP sweeps maybe four states by itself, then the BJP's need for strengthening NDA or of rediscovering old partners will decline. So that can have an adverse impact on the NDA. On the other hand, if BJP does very poorly in these four state elections, then the reading on the BJP side will be, look, we have to be careful. We may fall short of seats in the coming general elections. So it's better to rediscover our old allies now to say, let bygones be bygones. We need to build a real NDA now. So either way, these elections will be critical for the future of India and NDA. Next, it will be the electoral test of giveaways, welfareism, freebies, whatever you choose to call them, that depends on you. The Congress party and opposition parties for some time have been promising a lot of giveaways. That happened in Karnataka and looks like it worked. They've done so in Karn Telangana as well. This is on test. They've done so in Madhya Pradesh and they've, they've in fact handed out a lot of giveaways, a lot of welfare subsidies and things in Rajasthan as well. Congress party has promised the cheapest LPG return to old pension scheme, etc. Now the BJP for a long time, for some time, Prime Minister Modi was critical of what he called as ravery culture in our politics, that is giveaways. For some time, he hasn't talked about it, which is significant. So has he begun to worry that this is working for the opposition? If you see Madhya Pradesh, then the BJP has tried to counter the Congress ravery for ravery, if I could use that expression. So once again, this, this ploy in politics is on test. It look If it looks like that this politics work, the politics of giveaway promises or promised giveaways work, then you never know. BJP may also make a complete shift in its own stance going away to national elections. Number five, the woman factor. So the BJP is making a really big deal in this campaign of the women's reservation bill because they want women's vote. How important is the women's vote? So they are making noise about the women's reservation bill. They are also talking about welfare schemes, specially directed towards women, particularly in Madhya Pradesh. You've seen the whole range of largely Bana schemes. The Congress, on the other hand, is very specifically targeting women. In every state going to the polls, after Karnataka, Congress is offering straightforward doles or allowances for women. Karnataka, they've already done so. Lowest priced LPG and many other benefits. Only in Madhya Pradesh has the BJP matched this scheme for scheme, nowhere else. Again, since the fight is over the women vote, and I will just tell you in a minute with some data why the women's vote has become so much more important now. The BJP at this point lacks a strong woman campaigner. There is Vasundra Raja in Rajasthan, but she's been kept out of the mainstream campaigning for a very long time. In the past, it had Sushma Swaraj, it might have had Uma Bharti. Sushma Swaraj is now gone. Others are in a shadow right now or sidelined. Congress party, on the other hand, at this point, does have Priyanka Gandhi, which tilts the equation a little bit. Now, why has the women vote, vote become more important? That's because over time we have seen that more women are coming out to vote than men. This graphic shows you between 2009, 2014, 2019. 
three Lok Sabha elections. And we keep telling you in journalism, the classical journalism school uh, line is that three is a straight line. So you have, you have to have the example of three. So if you look at three elections, then the percentage of women voting is going up. Now, if marginally, very marginally, it has gone above men, 2009. Of the people turning out to vote, the turnout percentage, 60.24% was men, 55.0% was women. So the difference was 5%. 5 percentage points more men came out to vote than women. That was a big difference. So you did not have to worry so much about directing your message at women. In 2014, it had begun to change. 2014, 67% men, 65.54% women. So still more men, but just, just about 1.5% more. From 5% gap, it became 1.5% gap. 2019, lo and behold, 67.5%. 0.2% men and 67.18% women, so marginal by only 0.15%, but still women who, who were voting, who had a 5% deficit compared to men in 2019, now had a surplus over men. And that is what changed the picture and, and everybody in the elections now realized that the woman vote was very, very important. Once again, if you want to see the voting percentage for men and women for various parties, at least for the three relevant states in the heartland, that is MP, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, there is a little surprise there. And these, this is data from Lok Sabha elections. And so in Madhya Pradesh, even though the BJP swept these elections, they did poorly for the women's vote in 2019. So BJP's vote, 54% male, 47% female. That is a sizable difference. In Rajasthan, again, the difference was sizable. It wasn't 7% as in Madhya Pradesh, but in Rajasthan, it was 58% to 53%. So, 5 percentage point difference. In Chhattisgarh, it was the opposite. In Chhattisgarh, it was the opposite. 29% men voted for the BGP and 38% women voted for the BGP. I told you there's a surprise here. And then there is, just, just as you always have something, for a reference point, you want to use UP as a reference point. You, BJP did brilliantly in UP also. A male vote for the BJP, 46%. And what was the female vote for the BJP? Exactly 46%. So BJP would be very keen to bridge this equation in Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan as well. Because if they can do so much, so much better for women in Chhattisgarh and equal and be equal in UP, then why are they doing so poorly in Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan? So that will also be an issue for the BJP. That's why the woman factor is our fifth element in today's discussion.